For years, education has stagnated. Every day when students go to class, they do the same things that students have been doing since the 1940s. They sit, they listen to a lecture, they maybe read, they'll work with their partners, and that's about it. But it's what we've been doing for, for maybe the past century. Uh, and I have to ask myself, why has this not changed, right? So we experience and we learn the most from experiential experiences. We, we learn with our senses, and so why is it that we are still reading off of pages and we're still just watching lectures as opposed to experiencing our education? Enter VR. Uh, so the first time I had a VR headset put on my head, um, it was... Uh, it was, it was definitely memorable. Normally at this point of a VR talk, uh, the speaker will comment on how incredible this VR experience was and how it changed their life forever. Uh, my experience was very, very different for sure. Uh, I felt instantly sick, it was really grainy, um, and the humans in this experience did not look like humans. It had something that we call the uncanny valley, uh, which is sort of just a really creepy avatar that that makes you feel like you want to puke, for sure. Um, and so I was still pretty curious about this technology, but I definitely was not impressed yet. So I got more curious. Uh, I started doing more research. I started developing in VR. I started playing video games, building video games. Uh, and luckily, the VR scene sort of grew. Uh, better hardware came out. Better software came out. Uh, things were getting, were improving, but at the same time, things were moving in a direction in which most mediums do, right? It was an entertainment sort of direction. So we look at VR, we think of games, movies, but uh, not too many people thought beyond that about a year ago. So I thought about what could this medium potentially mean for our education? What could this mean for, for students who don't like to sit in class and read and who struggle to pay attention in class? Uh, but at the time, it was still not Super not feasible. But a couple months more, HTC Vive releases a room scale piece of technology. And what that looks like is it's a VR headset where I could walk there, but I could be in a jungle. Um, so I can experience an entirely new world around me. And at this point, I realize that like VR is definitely something that will change our education. Uh, I got really excited uh, for context. I selfishly work on things that focus on education, accessibility, and immersive technology. So to me, this was a really awesome opportunity to work on things that all interested me. Uh, and so I ended up starting a company uh, with a friend, and it's a education VR company. It's an XR company as well. If you guys aren't familiar with the term XR, it means immersive reality. Um, so that includes all the R's, AR, VR, MR. Uh, definitely a very cool industry, but I have to say that the thing that excites me the most is for sure the education. Like I said earlier, we learn things through our senses, so it's really difficult to understand why it persists through kindergarten all the way to college and post-secondary stuff that we are still learning off of pieces of paper. Um, I don't know about you, but I, don't, I didn't really learn much about like Rome or become too impressed by just reading about its architecture. I feel like I would have been far more impressed if I went there, and I did. I, when I went to Rome, I, I was far more impressed. I wanted to learn about it, I was curious. But that experience was far different to the experience that I got sitting in class reading about it. So in education VR, there are three types of, uh, three types of different education. So there is vocational, professional, and K through 12. So let's start with vocational. So vocational looks sort of like this. Uh, you train EMTs, nurses, paramedics, etc. Uh, it's an awesome industry. Uh, I think this was something that really opened my eyes to how VR could actually be accessible. So when you think of VR and when you talk to schools, the first thing that comes to their mind is, well, it's expensive. Well, there's technology. How are we going to pay the thousands of dollars for this? Well, I ask you to consider uh, what this could mean for vocational schools. So here we have a clinical sims environment. So it normally costs upwards of millions of dollars to create an actual physical lab at a school. 
the cost that it would cost for a school to build a virtual lab that can be customized per lesson and changed as needed and used as needed comes out to five to 10K. That's astounding. For schools in Canada, which were a lot of the schools that we worked with, they don't have the budgets of larger American private schools. And this is, to them, this was an awesome option. We had plenty of beta schools and they were excited about it because they should be. And I was excited about it too, because I was always scared. You know, what, what does it mean when you have an awesome technology but it isn't accessible, you know? It, you're working on something that you know is out of reach for people. So the vocational aspect of it is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, because it means that we can, we can use technology in a way that doesn't exclude people, but does the opposite. If anything, it brings people in. So the second one, we have professional. So here we have a surgeon training in VR. Uh, the VR education professional aspect of it is really interesting to me because I think that in the media, a lot of people think that VR is not a thing that will become large, it's a fad. But at the same time, there's companies like Toyota and Ford that are investing in VR. They're training their employees in VR. Walmart is actually retraining all their employees for Black Friday in VR. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny, yeah. Um, so that's part of it. Uh, UPS is retraining all of their drivers. It's definitely not niche anymore. I, I would say that for the, for the companies that have the money to spend on this, this is, these are the people and the players that are putting all of their efforts into making this come, in, come true. Uh, and then my favorite part, uh, K through 12. So my passion lies in working with K through 12 students in VR in immersive technologies. And here's where the possibilities are truly endless. So one begins to think about how you learned in school. Uh, I was really lucky. I went to a school that had a lot of hands-on learning, um, but I, that was not the norm. I had like a weekly course where I was grabbing things, touching things, and that to me was um, incredible. Like I, at the time, I thought it was pretty boring, but looking at it now, it made a massive difference to me. And so we think about how and what this could mean for K through 12. So for K through 12, this means we can have our students walking through Rome. So this is a Rome experience, pretty grainy up there, but it is a full-sized Rome experience. Students can walk through, jump on things, have dialogue with characters, and it gives them the autonomy to learn at their own pace, to have dialogue, to feel like they are in the experience and they are in control of their own learning. And to have that autonomy at the ages of middle school age, elementary age, this encourages collaboration, discovery, it encourages all the things we want our students to learn. So let's think about more things. Let's think about students that have uh, attention disorders, right? So one really nice thing about VR that I did not anticipate in the beginning is that it's really good for students that have ADHD. Uh, the one thing about a VR headset is that when you put it on, you can't really see anything else. So if you're in an educational experience, the only thing you're gonna see around you is the educational experience. And the numbers talk. Uh, you will find anywhere between a 60 to 80 percent retention rate increase in a K through 12 environment. Uh, and to me, that was like absolutely astounding. I never thought that this would be something that could help students that have uh, learning disorders, um, but it is. And that's one of the many, many things that excites me about the K through 12 area. Um, but I have a video that I can show you. Uh, and this is a little bit what a, uh, what a middle school anatomy experience would look like.
So that experience is actually really cool. You can pull apart this entire model. Um, you can pull it apart with friends. You can look at the muscles. It's all incredibly high fidelity. Uh, and having access to that as a middle schooler would have been very cool. Students love to take it apart, put it back together, uh, throw it around, make new creations with the muscles. Um, the autonomy that they have during that is something that we've been told encourages them to continue learning because they're not being handheld. To be clear, I don't think XR in education is the answer to all of our education woes. Uh, I don't think that, I don't think I see a future where an entire classroom is sitting in a headset for six hours a day. I don't think any can, anything can replace the amazing teachers that we have and the work that they do, but I do see XR in education as a very, very powerful educational tool that we should be taking advantage of to supplement those amazing teachers who do so much for us. Um, with that, Thank you, um, and I hope that you guys think about a future where VR and XR uh, will, will make education accessible to everyone, uh, especially experiential education, anytime, anywhere. Thank you.